Uh, dear guests, good afternoon. Welcome to the discussion unleashing uh, the potential for, for change through civic uh, movements and uh, citizens' engagement, organized by European Fund for Balkans together with Engage Democracy Initiative and Balkans in Europe Policy Advisor Group. My name is Filip Lukic. I'm a journalist and a news reporter at TVN1 in Belgrade, and uh, I will be your uh, host today. Uh, those are my guests, as you can uh, see, and first of all, thank you all for being uh, here with us today. As I said, our topic and our aim is to explore today uh, the, the topic of uh, civic engagement and uh, activism, uh, especially uh, from the perspective of the latest eco-protests that happened in, in Serbia, because uh, we believe uh, that uh, that case somehow showed uh, a way and, uh, and a strength uh, of the citizens and, and their engagement. Uh, so we'll put focus on Serbia, but we'll also talk about other initiatives that, that happened uh, in, in the region in the past few years. Uh, so uh, first, let me introduce my, my guest today, uh, Vedran Džihic from uh, Austrian Institute uh, for International Affairs and a member of Balkans in Europe Policy Advisor Group. Uh, Vedran is also um, the author of the, of the brief that we are going to, to, to discuss about today. Uh, Marina Pavlic, Executive Director of Initiative uh, Kreni Promeni, the initiative that uh, became well known for the uh, organizing roadblocks and, and eco-protests uh, against Rio Tinto. Uh, Miran Pogacar, activist, uh, who is not only well known in Serbia because of the latest eco-protest, but also because of the uh, protests that uh, were organized by freelancers. Um, and uh, Bojana Selaković from uh, Civic Initiatives, uh, an NGO that actually um, in, the, in the past uh, decades, I would say, uh, is kind of offering help to citizens and empowering citizens in order to, to achieve their goals. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, Vedran um, is the author of the, of the brief uh, that actually analyzes uh, the uh, civic uh, engagement and, and the civic uh, movements and uh, their potential for democratization in, in our societies. And uh, I would really like to start with the most basic question, I, I would say, uh, and what are the, the, the main driving forces uh, for, the, for the citizens to, to become engaged in their so societies? Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, and just to mention my co-authors uh, of the policy brief, I mean, beer pack is always, always a kind of a common uh, exercise. So we have uh, Marika Jolai, uh, Jelena Vasiljevic, Alida Vracic, and Jelena was supposed to sit on the panel. She is unfortunately uh, at, at home. Uh, so let me, let me start by, uh, by something quite obvious and quite simple. So if we look at the slogans of movements, uh, initiatives that have emerged in the last decade, decade and a half on the Western Balkans, what will you see? You see slogans like stop, protect, fight, prevent, defend, justice, etc., etc. So uh, the signals, the symbols, and the names, the slogans are basically telling you what lies at the core uh, of the mobilization of the citizens. So there are uh, very urgent uh, local issues everyday problems, uh, there are grievances uh, that uh, citizens want to address, stop, and prevent from. Uh, that's the very core of this type of mobilization that we've seen in the Western Balkans, and that was the case in, I don't know, when we look uh, back to Bosnia in 2014, the Bosnian Spring uh, originated in this moment of working uh, towards protecting workers' rights in the small city of Tuzla. Prior to that, there was the Jumeberger uh, protests uh, uh, stemming from this small baby that was not able to travel to Belgrade. When we just moved to uh, justice for David, it's the justice, uh, and justice for Jenan in Bosnia and Herzegovina. When we now uh, move to Kruščica, uh, to these brave women uh, that protected the river uh, in the Bosnian small city, uh, that's also preventing, uh, stopping. And it goes uh, to Belgrade. Kreni Pokreni move against something, stop uh, Rio Tinto. Uh, so that's uh, that's fundamental starting point. But then, uh, I mean, there is a question that we probably will address and need to address. What comes after the stopping? What comes after preventing? What's the next step? Uh, and what's the desire of the citizens behind 
uh, trying to stop and to prevent. And this is then a kind of a more general question that we need to address, uh, referring to the fact that obviously the institutions are not delivering, uh, that institutions are captured, that usual ways of decision making's, making uh, processes are blocked, that there are other interests put between citizens uh, and uh, the state, which is then particular interests of elites, of small groups, economic interests, etc., etc. And then the fundamental question is basically how to translate and transform uh, this stop, prevent, fight uh, into a new political uh, that is able to free uh, institutions, create free decision-making processes, and basically create the accountability uh, in a society or normalcy uh, in a society. And normalcy is basically, uh, just to conclude, something that uh, Hannah Arendt uh, uh, told us when she was defining the politics. I mean, politics is the service for the people. And if the politics turns to be a service for small groups, for individuals, for corrupt political parties, then it stops being uh, political in a very sense. And fighting for that sense of, 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 of political uh, is basically the urgency uh, behind all these movements. We will definitely talk about institutions, about uh, political parties, uh, and also those kind of, of uh, <coughs> uh, fights that, that citizens uh, actually are fighting instead of political parties who uh, do not have uh, potential to uh, articulate their, their needs and their, their voices. Uh, but uh, it was very interesting in the paper to, to read that uh, you actually mark the civic engagement as a key for, for democratization process. We remember some times when, for example, the EU or the EU membership perspective was that key uh, for, for dem democratization, that, that uh, driven force for democratization. Why is now civic engagement and those kind of, of movements? I mean, it's, it's, it's the result of, uh, of a failure, uh, basically, that we uh, have witnessed in the last two, two and a half decades. I mean, when we embarked on, 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 this, uh, upon, on this, this kind of a path towards democracy, towards representation, uh, participation back in the 90s or here in Belgrade after October 2000, uh, there was an assumption that basically uh, we need to do the homework in elections, institutions, transparency. We need to follow the European path uh, we need to uh, obviously introduce market economy, exercise this kind of uh, uh, game of being and behaving on the market in a, in a proper way. Uh, and then when we just do step by step, and there was the promise of the European Union, we will at the end of the day uh, arrive at the promised land. Lani, land of honey and milk or, or Mercedes Benz or whatever you wish uh, uh, it is to take as an emblem for the European Union and for the West. Uh, and, uh, and this is basically the first disappointment. I mean, the first disappointment is that the EU enlargement has derailed. derailed. Uh, in the meantime, so today we can say it's almost a dead man walking, trying to pretend to be alive through some uh, technocratic exercises, bureaucratic exercises, but basically that's not the momentum. The promise of democracy that was at the beginning uh, quite strong uh, has also lost that kind of a sh that, that shiny image uh, that was here at the beginning. I mean, when we just look at the state of democracy today, in 2022, uh, it's basically in large parts of the globe uh, in uh, despair. And what came up uh, is something that few of my colleagues described as authoritarian equilibrium uh, spreading in parts of Europe, parts of the globe, in Brazil, in Hungary, in Russia, in Turkey, Philippines, China, and I think obviously also in Serbia uh, and in parts of the Western Balkans. Uh, and uh, so authoritarian equilibrium, uh, disappointed expectations in democracy in the European Union uh, poses the question really what's left? Where is the core of the hope? I mean, a society needs a hope. Uh, a society needs a vision. If society loses a vision and a hope, that's a lost society that, that stops being existing, basically. Uh, and uh, here we see, I mean, we have, uh, be it environmental mobilization, be it perceived injustice, be it uh, protecting a reverse, uh, be it fighting corruption, there are cores of, of a new mobilization that point at a certain common sense among people. People want to live normal lives. People don't want to be ruled by corrupt uh, nepotists, 
idiots uh, or whatever you take. I mean, you can describe it as, 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 as you wish. Uh, and, and this is now kind of a fundamental, uh, fundamental moment of, of basically hope uh, and vision in our societies. And then when Kreni Pokreni uh, takes it to the streets, uh, that offers a perspective that the change is possible. And if the change is not possible, we die. And if the change is uh, made possible and you create a narrative of change, then basically uh, there is a certain horizon uh, to, to work uh, towards. We'll see how activists also see that uh, that hope. But uh, I would like first to, to, to address, uh, Boana, uh, what Vedran mentioned. Uh, so we have authoritarian tendencies in the, in the region of Western Balkans uh, again. Uh, and uh, if we think uh, of the early 2000s and the protest against uh, Milosevic in, in the 90s, uh, those protests were uh, for freedom uh, against uh, the regime, isolation, uh, trying to get back Serbia to the world. Uh, and those protests nowadays are kind of uh, for environmental issues, uh, for a better environment, for rivers, for, for um, better air quality, etc. Uh, is there any parallel that uh, we can uh, see uh, between these two kind of waves of, of protests? Of course, uh, there are some parallels in terms of, uh, you know, general uh, tendencies uh, uh, and, and general waves in, uh, in society and also uh, in terms of uh, the position of, 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 of the regime, of, uh, of, of the government. Uh, but uh, I would say that the situation is uh, uh, completely different in, in terms of context. Uh, if you remember, uh, during that previous period, uh, we had very strong polarization in, in, in the society. That was, <clears throat> that was a starting point. So uh, we have protesters and, and, and people who were against uh, the authoritarian uh, regime. And on the other side, people who supported uh, authoritarian regime and authoritarian uh, uh, regime in, uh, during that period uh, meant isolation, meant wars, uh, meant uh, uh, supporting to uh, war crimes, etc., uh, etc. Et and now uh, uh, the situation is a uh, you know, bit complicated because officially uh, uh, our government and our regime is supported by European Union, uh, by foreign community. Uh, and when you compare that with the, with the, with the previous period, uh, that, that's a big discrepancy. Uh, and uh, now uh, it is, uh, you know, more complicated uh, also to address uh, some of uh, those uh, uh, very important uh, fundamental elements of democracy uh, because, uh, you know, the strategies uh, uh, now uh, are a bit uh, 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 so uh, uh, smart, uh, uh, I would say that, and people were not aware of the problem of rule of law, of the freedom, of capturing the institutions, etc., etc. Uh, and if you remember, uh, during the last 10 years, there were some initiatives, uh, Sava Mala, uh, Jovanica, uh, all other uh, uh, big issues that were tried to be addressed by opposition uh, parties, by civil society organizations. But uh, now all those issues uh, which are addressed during the protests actually are the problem of rule of law. But now uh, uh, they are visible and people can feel it. it. Mm -hmm. And now they can understand uh, uh, that problem. And I, I, I don't like to, to say that, you know, we raised environmental awareness here in Serbia because uh, the concrete reason for all those protests actually is related to the rule of law in this country. Uh, and now uh, when, when you have it in a very focused, tangible, uh, uh, formulated uh, request or, or problem, then people can stand uh, uh, behind that. But also kind of uh, election uh, conditions, um, irregularities that we saw in the, in the past uh, few years uh, are also kind of tangible for, for people, but it seems that they don't feel it uh, that, that way. Why would I protest uh, for better uh, election conditions or, or better environment in the society? It's a problem of trust, you know, uh, a trust in key actors of democracy in our society, including uh, government, including institutions, but also including opposition parties, including this formal part of civil society, I'm mm -hmm. part of, 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 
of, of, uh, of civil society as well, but I'm fully aware of it. Uh, and uh, uh, now uh, uh, the only thing uh, uh, which can be uh, uh, actually uh, done by people is self-organizing. Uh, so elections also as a key element of, of democracy uh, now, uh, uh, how to say that? Uh, no uh, uh, concrete uh, reasons to believe that elections would change anything with the same actors. And that's the reason why people now supported also Kreni Promeni or other uh, uh, organizations or activistic group that were actually visible for the first time in our public uh, uh, in our public space. But also, uh, this is uh, this is this is a problem related to the global trends and general crisis of. Uh, liberal democracy and uh, uh, its elements, and uh, uh, I, I think that all relevant actors here in our society should be aware of it, especially political parties, especially opposition political parties. Uh, they have to be uh, uh, ready to change something, to reform them, themselves, if they want uh, to, to see and to have uh, citizen support. Otherwise, citizens uh, will continue to gather, uh, to gather themselves outside of the political parties or uh, existing uh, uh, formal civil society organizations. Uh, Marina, uh, is the trust that, that uh, Boina mentioned a uh, reason why uh, civic uh, uh, activists and uh, civic initiatives actually have kind of a great mobilization uh, perspective and, and the mobilization uh, kind of force uh, for, for citizens. So I hope you can hear me. Uh, so I think that uh, trust is only one of the things that are really, really important. So for many years, people really felt despair. They felt they, there is nothing they can do. This is something that you can hear in Serbia all the time. Uh, and with that ground, you can, of course, you cannot do anything. But uh, when you have fear and you translate that into hope, when you have isolation and you translate that in, into solidarity, and when you have constructive anger because anger is there and you translate it in something concrete and urgency to act right now, then you have people power. And this is something that basically you could see in the previous period. Uh, so I think there, is, there are different ways how we can move people, but the, uh, the, the point is that we need to, energy is out there, uh, we just need to channel it and to find a way to facilitate that energy into something concrete and to help people to really find a way for the future, not to think about the past anymore. Miran, uh, you, as I mentioned, um, you led uh, also protests uh, for freelancers' rights um, last year or a year before, mm -hmm. yes? <laughs> last year. Yeah, last year. Yeah. Um, and you were also part of the eco-protest uh, in the past uh, few months. Uh, what was the, the moment when, as a citizen, <clears throat> you say, okay, I have to, to, to get engaged, I have to, to raise my voice? against uh, something? I mean, that, that's a highly personal question. I mean, but I, I don't want to uh, answer it personally. Uh, first of all, maybe I will uh, go away, astray a little bit, because people talked about different subjects. So I want to address may maybe some broader issues and then to go uh, like uh, on, on concrete things. First of all, like from 2000s, we were promised democracy. We got br brutal capitalism and everything uh, that comes with it. So we got privatization, we got uh, foreign banks, we got everything. We got the situation that we have now, and that is like uh, with the problem with Rio Tinto, Ling Long, and foreign companies that are exploiting our country, exploiting the workers, even exploiting workers from different countries in our country. So uh, the problems that we got, uh, I think, will not be solved by pure uh, rule of law, because rule of law is based only on the things that are more essential, and that is equality between people and especially economic inequality. Uh, equality. Uh, because we have a high economic inequality, we have problems and issues that are uh, more on, on people that don't have by the people that have. So people that are in these struggles are usually people that are, uh, all, uh, that are uh, having economic problems and not just only them. 
that are conscious of uh, problems like uh, issues that we had uh, with now with the protests on on uh, basis of uh, ecology. But uh, just on the part of the slogans, um, uh, one of the things that we did with the freelancers is that we said we had a problem with taxation. So we said uh, robbery, not uh, taxation. Yes. So we had positive thing that we uh, wanted to address. Also, uh, these kind of protests that we had now, when we uh, look at the Serbia, uh, Serbia had protests every year from 2016, big protests every year, so every year on different issues. The difference between uh, the protests that were uh, back then, like 2017, 16, 18, and 19, and now, like 2021, 20, is that uh, the, the protests that we had, for example, freelancers and ecology were uh, on concrete issues, had concrete demands, and demands that could uh, can be fulfilled. So uh, that was the, the thing that uh, was substantially different from the protests that we had. The other protests were, uh, for example, for free elections against the government, against the, the the people that, uh, so the protest demanded the people that were ruling to uh, uh, go down. And that wasn't possible. They wouldn't let it go. So th some things can be fulfilled and we proved it by these protests that they, uh, that they can be achieved. But uh, we believe with uh, small kind of wins like these with ecological protests, freelancers and different stuff that we had in the past year uh, that uh, the big win is possible. And personal question, uh, what was the moment when you realized that you want to be part of, of, of something bigger? Uh, it, it's a kind of different story. I mean, I, mean, I come from Bosnia. Uh, I, I lived through war. I lived in a small village. I came in a big city. So everything was telling me I need to do something, not just about myself, but other people. And I, I saw a lot of problems in my own life, and not just in my own life, but in other people's life, my neighbors, and how were they fighting uh, for, for their life. Mm -hmm. So how were they living? So I decided to participate not only in, in this kind of movement, but in other different movements, student movements, and other things that uh, were happening through these years. Uh, I also participated. And I believe many people participated, and many people that were in these kind of protests uh, came to be in, uh, like in different initiatives, in parties, in NGOs, but they are also active. So protests are, are a good thing for uh, every country, and not just protests, but everything what, that comes with it. So it's not just a thing of a protest. Protest is the final, like, or something that we see. There are many things that are happening behind the scenes. And even now, so uh, what I want, j just mm -hmm. one uh, sure. thing more, like uh, people say, uh, something that we see all, like uh, Kreni Proveni started everything, but these kind of ecological protests are running in this country all, uh, all these years, like three or four, four years, years, four years. Four years. Yeah. And big protests happening, happened in 2021 around now called ec ecological uprising, but there were two big protests. They were like freelancers, they were different protests and uh, uh, roadblocks that happened, happened because of the violence that happened on them. I mean. They were they sprung they 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 like uh, started b going big because of the violence of the state and all the thugs that uh, uh, beat the people. So that was the the the, the thing that uh, the reaction of the state uh, that wasn't appropriate uh, helped. We 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 should say helped the protests themselves. And I think that leads uh, me to, to, to the question to, to Marina, because uh, if once um, decide to, to lead protests in Serbia, definitely they need courage to do so. And uh, what is uh, kind of a, a driving force for, for you as a citizen to, to decide to, to stand in front of the government or uh, other people in this country and, and say, yes, I will do it. I know what the consequences probably will be because uh, we saw the rhetorics, we saw people who were beaten up at, at, at the protests. Uh, what was the, the moment when you decide that, uh, that you're eager to take that responsibility and, and risk? I think that each one of us are doing that uh, uh, decision every day. Uh, and uh, I think that there is no one decision to do that. Like, because we as Krenik Promeni, maybe at that point were the one who spo spoke in the public, but every person made that choice who went outside. You know, at one point we were on the blockades, uh, surrounded with 
40 policemen and we couldn't go to, to the street uh, and the, to do the goal that we wanted, but other, others did that. So all together we uh, did that. Uh, so I don't think that Kreni Promeni is like crucial. The thing is that every person should make that shift in their brain and to say like, yes, I can, and all, all together we can do that. Uh, and if all of us do that, like, of course we can make the power. And I would just like, would like to remind uh, everyone to, to tell the story about many people who were like during the first blockades um uh the same day the opposite uh, the the regime party made a huge event with 30,000 people to make the contra uh, contra thing and uh people in the buses who were coming there were sending us messages please blockade us so that is a huge shift even with the people who are feeling the fear to lose their jobs to lose their families like if they don't have the fear to to to, to be scared anymore, uh, like I think this is a good sign. So you think it's important for for people to see that actually change is possible and of that course. there there shouldn't be a fear. If you see that change is possible, then you have the hope, and then you will do the step to. Can to I add go something yeah, sure. uh, related to this? Uh, I think that uh, this li last wave uh, uh, actually uh, also one of of reason uh, uh, why it was so successful. Uh, is related to the fact that we had one group of people, very concrete uh, uh, people, human beings, with a huge problem. And we saw those people. I, I, I mean on people from, from Yadar and all other uh, uh, locations where there is possibility of lithium exploration. Uh, so we saw them, uh, we can see uh, uh, what they feel, uh, actually, and we could see that their struggle, their uh, uh, activities are authentic. Uh, and uh, I think this is very important also, uh, similar is with the freelancers or, or other uh, protests where we had people with very concrete problem. And that kind of solidarity then uh, uh, actually uh, made a kind of, of, uh, uh, of massive uh, reaction. Uh, so I think this is very important. Also, similarly, uh, people from Stara Planina or other uh, uh, locations uh, with uh, small hydro plants, uh, similar is in, in, in Bosnia or, or Montenegro. Uh, when we saw those people who are ready to defend you know, their houses, their properties, uh, lands, etc., etc., and we can you know, uh, feel them, uh, then I think it, it's a very, very, very uh, important uh, thing that push uh, uh, people uh, to, to join uh, all those activities. Uh, government, especially in Serbia, uh, decided to use very harsh rhetorics towards people who were protesting. Uh, what do you think? Why, why that was the strategy of the government uh, in, in, in Serbia. I guess we can also uh, draw par parallel with other illiberal regimes in, in, in Europe that you mentioned. Why is that the strategy yeah. that, that the government uh, wants to use? Uh, I mean, that, that, that's a very good question because that, that brings us to the core of the, of the regime. I mean, uh, in order to know what the strategies uh, are applied at certain moments, we, we need to understand how the regime is functioning, basically. Uh, and uh, I think what you have as basic features, features of this pseudo-democratic facade democracy, you can describe it as, as you wish. You have obviously politics of fear. I mean, that's one element of it. And the rhetorics fits into this kind of a politics of fear. Then you have uh, the process of basically co-optation, uh, of trying to co-opt uh, as many uh, circles and, and, and segments of society into the Serbian Progressive Party, uh, Hydris, or whatever, however you want to describe it. Uh, and that's a process basically where you mix the fear uh, uh, with offering something, comfort, jobs, uh, whatever. Uh, and I mean, this is precisely, I mean, deconstructing it is the people sending messages from the buses and telling you, okay, I, I have to go there, but basically I would love to do something uh, different. That's, that's quite important. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and with this co-optation goes basically also the system of compromising people, basically. So when you just enter, put your step into some parts of the regime, you are compromised, you, are, you can be pushed, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and this kind of a sort of democratic government, obviously with captured institutions, uh, always try, tries to keep that equilibrium floating, this ship basically floating. 
borrowing a bit of legitimacy from the European Union, uh, playing with Russia, China, uh, uh, even stopping. I mean, no, the, the, the phase that we will probably address today, I mean, the, you have the protest and you try to react, you go with harsh rhetorics, but you have to see basically that the power of people on the streets is probably much bigger. Then you just uh, slow it down, uh, tone it down and try to use it. So basically, uh, uh, the moment is, uh, the, uh, those sort of democratic regimes, they always deal with uncertainty. They are never certain that they can live endlessly. Uh, until the end of our days, even though they hope to. Uh, so they use different, I mean, that's not the truly authoritarian regime in a sense that you just smash the people. Yes. So then you will go to the streets and, and like in Kazakhstan and just, or in, in, in Belarus. That's not that way. And that makes it difficult basically to address. And uh, I mean, referring to your question on the methods, I mean, this is, this is not a clear pattern. Sometimes they will go for harsh rhetoric, sometimes they will try to co-opt, sometimes they will try uh, to move towards Brussels, open up, even simulate a kind of, uh, you know, participation and, and even invite. I mean, uh, just imagine, Vucic is a chameleon per se. He uh, will be able to, I don't know, to invite you, for example, and make you a prime minister if he believes that secures basically his his political life. I mean, similar to Dodik in, in Republika Srpska. I mean, they just do it all the time. So basically, there is no common pattern, but then the question is how to address that. Uh, basically, then the, the crucial point is, I believe, obviously, hope and, and channel, channeling this anger, uh, getting the people from the buses uh, on your side, and keep going on focusing on these concrete issues, not giving up. Uh, that's a fundamental story, because that creates even a bigger uncertainty uh, and helps basically, and that's probably one of the, the next steps, to transform the energies uh, into the political system, because this is the next, next story. I mean, we are not yet at, uh, at the moment where Mojimo uh, in Croatia uh, is right now. Moramo mm. might be a next step. There is a coincidence between Mojimo and Moramo. I mean, it's not, not I mean, obviously they, they, they do cooperate with each other. Uh, but that's then the, the, the next big uh, issue. Now it's like setting the agenda, showing that the change is possible, and then the next one is how to translate it into political change. And, and, and it is possible. And do you have the, the answer to that, to that question? How? Because uh, we see that political parties are not very welcomed at the protests. People don't want to, to get uh, and have any connection with any political party in, in, in Serbia. Uh, I also remember one of uh, five million protests when uh, opposition parties showed up, but uh, people were disagreeing with, with mm -hmm. that. And, uh, how do you transform the energy into that kind of political system and, and uh, having political party that can articulate uh, people's uh, voices? Look, I mean, this is, this is not impossible. I mean, we are not uh, in Serbia or in the Balkans, we are not an isolated panel, uh, planet. I mean, in the last two decades, we have seen a proliferation of, of, of protest and, and uh, social civic movements all around the globe. Many of them managed to transform uh, into political parties. Some of them failed. Of course. Uh, I mean, uh, and, and you have spots on the globe, uh, like in Latin America right now, where you see certain political changes based on mobilizing on inequalities, uh, brutal capitalism, uh, destroying of the public health systems, etc., etc. Uh, and uh, there, is no, there is no magic. Uh, but I think that, I mean, when you look at statistics, and we have some statistics in the policy briefs, first of all, you see that the people still believe in elections. Uh, and it's quite high. I mean, in Serbia, it's like 71% of the population believes in elections. Uh, but at the same time, you see that uh, the, the constituency of, of change is also here. I mean, 31% of the people in Serbia believe that the self-organized self citizens are the only actors to be trusted and that can deliver change. And that's, I mean, political parties, it's only 24%. EU, it's only 10. Uh, local organizations, it's 9. If you calculate 9 plus 31, it's 40% of the population believing and trusting into uh, basically citizens' power. Uh, and also, sorry to, to yeah. interrupt, but 70% uh, of people believe in, in the elections, but that only 50% uh, of them go involved. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's precisely what I wanted to, to address, basically. That's the puzzle. I mean, uh, 
as we have to demask the regimes, we have to liberate and to free the elections that are still here. I mean, the, the arena of elections is rigged, is manipulated, is taken, the legitimacy is, has eroded, but it's still here. This is part of this authoritarian equilibrium. They need to, in order to keep that facade, they keep elections. I mean, we might see that, that for example, Viktor Orban loses in, uh, in, in Hungary and now in April. On, this, on, on, on at the beginning of April. We might, I mean, we are not going to see the defeat of, of Vucic, but we will definitely see a rise. Uh, I mean, we will see probably numbers for, for Moramo, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's the path uh, to, to, to take it forwards. And I mean, there is, a, there is one important moment. Once you start demasking uh, the facade, once you start basically freeing this arena of elections and combining it with participation on the streets, et cetera, et cetera, and once you get a proper response by the European Union, we might want to discuss that uh, once again, beyond the stabilitocracy and pragmatism appeasing uh, Vucic and the others, then I think we have a real constituency uh, for change. And then I think, I mean, then I think Vucic and, and, and the Serbian Progressive Party, as dominant as they are right now, they uh, might become meaningless uh, uh, in, uh, in, in a very short period of time. Miran, you, you wanted to comment. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to point out some uh, concrete differences between uh, political parties that we have and uh, initiatives and people on the ground that are organizing themselves. So first of all, the protests, won, uh, the protests that were led by the, the, the parties showed that they are highly disorganized uh, and totally uh, not communicating with each other and they cannot agree uh, on a thing and they're showing them uh, those kind of things uh, even now. So elections are here, They're, they cannot choose a candidate or a couple of candidates. We will have like 10 candidates for the president. So it is showing uh, uh, again and again that uh, these parties and these leaders are not uh, doing politics, not organizing. They are uh, PRing, they are uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. They're like uh, public people PR. They're not doing organizing. So. The, 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 most, the biggest difference is that uh, the people that I met like online or saw once or twice in life, we can organize more easily and we are totally on the uh, opposite uh, of uh, political spectrum. So uh, we should point out that these kind of protests show that people can <coughs> unite on concrete questions, but people uh, that were organizing uh, uh, between themselves and different cities were uh, totally on different political spectrum. So this is showing that people that are uh, guiding our uh, political parties are just leaders that are uh, doing only PR and not organizing. Organizing is the work that you need to do every day with the people that is not, uh, that you de don't see on, on Twitter, on Facebook, and that is something that our uh, parties are not doing. But it's also a fact that uh, at, at one point, Vedan also mentioned that civic movement has to become or to be transformed in the, in the uh, systematic political party. And how, how do you find the balance in preserving all the elements of the civic movement uh, as itself, but also adding uh, the, the other elements of the, of the political parties, which is kind of a... Uh, part of the uh, system of the legal and political system of one country and also it means uh, dealing with PR yeah of course I mean PR is uh, just a part of, of, of politics it's not the whole thing but uh, it, it's okay trust one thing and doing things so when people see you on the streets, not only on the streets, when you talk with people, when you do things with them, when you help organize them, when you help people uh, to, uh, to do things on their own without demanding anything, they will trust you and they will be able to support you if, we, if you ask uh, in a way to support you in a kind of a political way. But of course, uh, the thing is, as you like mentioned in a, in a kind of way. So uh, we need initiatives and we need, uh, as you call it, civic society, and we need, need uh, political parties and new political parties. And not just only that, we need new politics. So uh, things that are addressing these questions. So uh, there were some questions before this kind of a meeting, uh, and there was one, uh, will somebody address the ecological question that we have? So there is only uh, Mojimo, brief, uh, I mean, in a way, addressing this question, but uh, 
other parties uh, are thinking only on the elections and they will probably not address this question. So questions that are not uh, like 100% uh, this day uh, in news, uh, parties will not talk about it. Parties don't stick with the problem. They go day at the day like Vucic does and that's the problem. I mean, they don't have policies, they have a uh, news agenda that is just reading the news and answering to Vucic and things like that. So one of the things, uh, what we need to change is if you have a level of organizing, uh, you can demand and you can be in front, uh, I mean, when it comes to uh, moves uh, against the government. So don't let the government do uh, what they want and push you the way they want. So you need to be progressive in this way and thinking forward. And when you are organized, you are able to do that. Well, you, you also wanted to add something. Yeah, yeah. Um, this kind of discrepancy that uh, you mentioned about uh, the level uh, of trust in elections as such and the number of voters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely an uh, illustration of, you know, lack of alternative. Uh, uh, here and 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 existing a uh, level of trust in existing political uh, options parties uh, which are now uh, uh, have been offering to, to 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 the citizens but in terms of uh, some uh, further potential I would like to to highlight very important thing um, that uh, in, in next uh, for for two years uh, Serbia will have local elections and now all over the Serbia we have a numerous local <coughs> groups, uh, people who were joined and gathering, gathered uh, 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 for uh, this last, uh, last uh, uh, protests, but very focused on their local uh, issues, uh, environmental or, 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 or some other uh, questions. And I see more potential there uh, uh, to be uh, actually uh, um, uh, involved to participate uh, in next elections, but uh, like local uh, grass, uh, grassroots uh, groups all over the Serbia. We'll see what could be the next step uh, uh, after that, but uh, rather than uh, some, you know, big movement that can address uh, 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 issues at, 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 national, uh, at national level. And I think uh, this is very important thing. And I'm, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, even in, in some uh, uh, rural areas, we have active citizens who are now ready, now they are aware, now they are encouraged uh, uh, also to tackle and to address other, other issues and problems in their own uh, local communities. Uh, speaking uh, of political parties, uh, Maria, do you think that government was eager to compromise uh, on, on the requirements by Kreni Promeni because uh, it assumed that Kreni Promeni doesn't have kind of a political aspiration in the future? I assume that was one of the things that mm -hmm. helped them to make that decision. Uh, but I don't think it's a crucial one. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think that... Uh, People have shown, like, I think we are done with the narrative that uh, whatever we do, it will be the same. And mm -hmm. I'm really mm -hmm. glad because of that, because it will not be the same. Like, if we choose different direction, we will go in different direction. So now uh, everything goes back to people and, like, what we really want. I think we are not in the stage when, where people are thinking, what do I want? This is the next phase. We should think, what program do I want when we are thinking about politics? What people do I want to see on the scene? So far, it was not like that. It was like, wh whoever I choose, it will be the same. So I don't think about it. I will keep quiet in my apartment, and that's it. Uh, so I think, yeah, the thing is that we broke that. And I think the next step is to organize toward the, what we want. <laughs> was it also kind of uh, the most frightening thing for, for the government? Because uh, we saw um, a lot of harsh rhetorics uh, and very aggressive one uh, on kind of all national TV stations, all uh, pro-government uh, media in, in very few few days. And then from a uh, narrative of foreign agent, we came uh, to, to the narrative of we are fulfilling the, the requirements of the people of Serbia. I think they are scared of democracy, basically, because you can finally hear the voices of people because they are not isolated. When you have isolated people, you can do with them whatever you want. But if they have the voice and if they collect their voices into one, then there is no, um, there is no way you need to listen to the people because like Vedran said, like uh, the state should be really 
service to the people and they should respect the voice of the people. So if they don't do that, of course, they are in the problem. Vedran, uh, there is also, as you mentioned, data in, in this policy uh, brief, uh, especially regarding uh, the willingness of people to, to protest. And um, uh, how would you explain uh, the, the difference uh, between uh, people who are willing to, to go on the streets and protest and those who are just waiting at home, uh, seeing the, the, the real change, seeing that some change is possible, and then going to protest on the streets. Because, for example, uh, at the echo protests, uh, we saw first week, um, I don't know, maybe one or two thousand people. Uh, then next week we saw um, much more people. So how, how do you explain what, what happened uh, in, in the meantime? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's also a kind of a fundamental question. Look, I mean, the pseudo-democratic regimes, they, they, they want to create uh, a, a narrative, basically, that change is not possible and that this is going to stay forever. Mm -hmm. They want to achieve, the, basically, the comfort to, to, to people. And there are, at the very core, uh, in a kind of a neoliberal way, they are apolitical. They want to depoliticize uh, uh, the population. So that means give them the media, uh, organize games, zadrugas, uh, keep them busy, invent scandals all the time, uh, do whatever you want, but don't let them be politically engaged. And that's, uh, I mean, fr from that perspective, a kind of a perfect society would be where you have like few people uh, manipulating and, and running the society and you have a kind of a defeatist, uh, apathic uh, uh, population that is basically not engaging. This is what you can handle. Uh, and, and what you just said right now, I mean, uh, in the very moment where you get the feeling that simply everything is not going to be the same, that the ice on the streets of Belgrade, uh, if you change uh, uh, the local uh, government, will not be here and the uh, old 75, on, old, I mean, uh, just, just, just one hour ago, I almost basically fall on, on, on my head because, I mean, not a single uh, pedestrian zone is basically uh, freed from ice. Uh, and and this, is, this is, I mean, this is what you see. And when the, when the contrast, I mean, now you still have a lot of people in the comfort. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, but when the contrast and the gap between the, the reality that is presented to you through the rhetorics of the regime, through the narrative, through, through the narrative that we have the biggest highways and we have the best uh, economic growth and whatever, when that simply doesn't correspond with the reality and with the life that you live. And that's happening. I mean, that's happening because you can keep the facade. You can keep the facade. I mean, in a marriage, you can keep a facade. Between the friends, you can keep a facade. In the academic community, you can oh, keep the facade. You can destroy the mic. <laughs> can, uh, but there is a certain moment where simply the gap between the reality uh, and the facade is too big, and that's the tipping point. That's the tipping point. And, and uh, uh, I think that we have reached, in some of the societies in the Western Balkans, that we have reached a tipping point. I, I think almost certainly in Serbia, uh, not yet there in Bosnia, but I think now there is a kind of a big crisis might help uh, move towards that, that momentum. Uh, I think in, in Kosovo, which is an interesting uh, example as a contrast, I mean, Kosovo today is the most democratic society probably in the Western Balkans, yes. uh, uh, both in terms of the freedom of media, etc., etc. Uh, and and, and uh, that's also a result of different types of social movements, etc., etc. But I, I think in, in Serbia, we are at this at this uh, tipping point. The only problem that I see that can emerge is the geopolitical situation uh, right now and this looming clash between the West and, 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 and Russia. And then probably for the regime was the fundamental question where to position itself. Uh, and that might become in a possible negative scenario really dangerous and, 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 and leads to some kind of a violence. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I'm still on, the, on this hopeful kind of a, uh, vision of, of the future. We'll talk also about the EU, uh, EU's role uh, in, in this kind of civic uh, movement. Uh, but before we move to that to that topic, I would just like to, to briefly address uh, one issue that concerns a legal system, for example. Uh, so at, at certain point after the protests uh, happened, you need to uh, cooperate with the uh, formal system of one country, meaning legal system, political system, etc. Uh, so, Marina, Kreni uh, Promeni launched the People's Initiative um, to, to ban 
uh, lithium for 20 years mm -hmm. in, in Serbia, uh, but a lot of us obstacles emerge on that, on that way. Um, do you think that people think that, that something can be actually changed once uh, it has to go through the system? Of course it can. <laughs> I know that it can, but of course it wasn't. Um, uh, so, yeah, because institutions are not doing their job. Uh, and that's not the way it should be, because they are paid for it, we are paying for it, and they should basically do their job. Uh, I can give an example, because th this is not the first initiative there that we are made in 2019. In seven dates, with zero budget, we collected 42,000 signatures for another initiative. That national initiative is in the National Assembly for two and a half years. Nobody is putting that on the agenda. And th this is saying, what, what does that say to the people? Like, you can have the wo voice, but we will not hear it. We will pretend it's not existing. So people don't, like, we don't want that narrative anymore. Like, we want to be heard. And like the, that, because it wasn't like that, it doesn't mean it will be in the future like that. We need to push them to the, do their jobs. And you said like national initiative this time was not successful, but not yet. <laughs> we will keep pushing, yeah. So we mentioned trust uh, so many times uh, here today, uh, but it's not that only uh, trust is needed uh, in order to, to achieve something through the system, but it's also hard when system actually shows its brutality uh, towards people, and that happened uh, at echo protests. Uh, a lot of people um, got punished and got fines for being at the protests. Uh, so civic initiatives uh, offer help uh, to them, uh, how many of, of, of those people contacted you? Uh, what were the, the, the fines? Uh, so how was the process? Yeah, it is interesting uh, actually uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what was the, the order. Uh, I'm saying the order because it is obviously uh, the order uh, as the same poll actually. Um, police stations in, uh, in Serbia did the same thing. Uh, and try to punish people uh, who were a part of public gatherings uh, by the traffic law uh, in, in Serbia. So they are punished as traffic passengers. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, receiving uh, uh, fines of uh, 40 uh, uh, euros. Uh, and uh, also the other problem is how they identify them. Uh, there is uh, almost consensus uh, between all lawyers uh, here in Serbia that all these uh, uh, actually uh, uh, things will be addressed by the court. Uh, of course, uh, 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 for uh, positively for, for 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 the citizens, and again, uh, this should be paid, and all of us will will pay for uh, for such practice. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, actually something that I uh, couldn't imagine earlier. Uh, because uh, Serbia uh, has a, a law on uh, public gatherings, uh, I think uh, five years uh, ago, it is adopted five years ago. Uh, there are some gaps uh, in it, but more or less uh, this law is uh, uh, in the line of uh, international standards and it is, uh, it, it, it is adopted as a, a part, as an obligation uh, of uh, Serbia within the chapter 23, uh, chapter of uh, basic freedoms, because uh, uh, freedom of, uh, uh, actually, uh, freedom of assembly is one of the core civic uh, rights uh, 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 in, 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 in the world. Uh, and uh, according to this law, it is not possible for you as a citizen or me or anybody to be punished as a participant of public gathering. Uh, so uh, there is possibility for organizers of uh, a protest which is not uh, um, legally, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 requested, but for the participants, no way to be to be punished. It's a it's a standard. It's an international standard. So they uh, find this solution. So something uh, uh, somebody uh, 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 lose the time and find uh, find solution to to actually misuse existing legal framework in Serbia to punish people who were uh, on the streets. On the other side, the majority of their rep uh, requests or all requests were accepted 
by the government, by the president. So it's a nonsense now uh, 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 that we have people uh, who are uh, who are receiving fines. What is good? Uh, uh, we established a kind of, of uh, uh, network for, for support. I strongly believe, unfortunately, that uh, this kind of support will be needed uh, in the future as well. Uh, and uh, we have a network of lawyers uh, who, uh, uh, who are uh, engaged uh, um, uh, for free, uh, and they will defend people uh, on the courts. Uh, we have a, a solidarity fund for, uh, for paying, uh, uh, if there is a possibility for that. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, now uh, the, this was very important for people to know that they were not uh, alone and that they will not be alone uh, if they lose uh, uh, court pr uh, proceedings. Uh, so uh, this is something that definitely for the first time that we have such uh, kind of solidarity and such uh, and such wide network. We also considered and we uh, did very concrete uh, uh, steps uh, in a way to use uh, uh, certain um, both domestic or international mechanisms uh, in order to, uh, to, to, to prove that we have a, here in Serbia strong attack on basic freedom, freedom of, uh, uh, of assembly. And something very similar happened uh, in uh, the protests last July. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? Why is the force the first response of the, of the government? Because all those things happened uh, mostly uh, at, the, at the first gathering, uh, at the first night of the July's protests. So why is the force the, the initial initial response of the government? Uh, so uh, what I have realized is that definitely force. Uh, made a kind of uh, different feedback for the majority of people. So a lot of people that I, uh, that I talked to uh, uh, during last weeks, they said, yes, they want to punish us, but we won't give up. So this kind of uh, you know, reaction actually pushed them, uh, pushed them to, 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 to go back. But uh, if you compare uh, last uh, protest in, in, in uh, that was in July 2000, uh, 2020. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and these protests we didn't have that kind of of force. I think that they took their lesson from 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 those protests. So this was uh, you know different kind of of reaction. Of course, uh, uh, with uh, with uh, with hidden uh, agenda, with the same objective, uh, to actually uh, 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 for 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 threats, for uh, to, in order to, to 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 say people. So it is better to stay at home, not go to the streets. Okay, we want you know uh, 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 fight you or beaten you, but you will pay. Uh, so uh, this is uh, now something uh, uh, something different if you compare uh, with the previous protests, and if you also compare, you mentioned uh, discrepancy in numbers between first and the second um, uh, block uh, uh, block road. Uh, one of the most important reasons, uh, uh, from my perspective, uh, is a force, but not. Uh, uh, from the side of the government or police, but other uh, groups. You remember situation from Shabbat. I think uh, it was a, a, a very important thing that uh, uh, also initiate maybe people who didn't want to participate before, uh, and because of Shabbat and everything related to Shabbat, they decided uh, to go and to participate. Uh, so uh, in in that regard, uh, you know, brutality uh, uh, on the other side. Uh, uh, produce resistance, uh, and this is something uh, which is uh, uh, which was uh, which was uh, which was seen in so many times, not only in our part of, of, of the world, uh, but I think that uh, the regime uh, will not use uh, uh, it so openly, at least uh, at, at, at this stage. Uh, so rather, they will use some. Uh, some some other things like this kind of uh, of fines by uh, traffic law, which is not brutality, but actually the objective uh, is the same. Veteran, we heard that even government in Serbia learned some lessons from from the protests. Uh, do you have a feeling that the EU uh, has learned anything uh, about the, the the protests, about the civic engagement in in uh, in the Western Balkans? So, what would be the the, the EU's position on on such uh, such initiatives? I mean, the, we have several kind of a policy ad advices for the European Union in the policy brief. 
but they are sometimes quite quite technical. Uh, and it's difficult to talk about the EU uh, just generalizing. I mean, the EU. Uh, what is it? Is, the, is it uh, members of the European Parliament that just signed the petition uh, uh, for solving the crisis in Bosnia and, and, and imposing sanctions on Dodik? Uh, is it the EU, uh, the green uh, uh, parties that support the protest movements here quite openly or they invest uh, and put certain, certain resources? Or is it the Hungarian uh, version of, of the EU or the Polish one uh, or, or the, the version of the far right uh, movements that we have spread? Uh, across the European Union. But uh, sir, we, we uh, still remember the, uh, the uh, statement of the uh, spokesperson of the uh, European Commission stating that uh, they think Rio Tinto is a kind of a, a good perspective uh, for Serbia and a good chance for economic uh, development of, of Serbia. Yeah, I mean, these are those, uh, there, there have been several statements that were basically a kind of a dire catastrophe. Uh, that's an in, uh, insult to the injury, basically. I mean, Angela Merkel sending the messages here in Belgrade and as well as Ursula von der Leyen mm. uh, doing this kind of an exercise of uh, calling uh, the Alexander and then praising the rule of law. I mean, this is, this is an utter disaster. I mean, there is, there is no other words basically to describe it. And this is the very example of how you compromise your values uh, for the sake of whatever. Perceived stability, imagined stability, uh, dreamt stability, whatever you take. I, I, I think uh, there is a very important moment when it comes to the European Union uh, right now. Uh, now with the pressure from Russia, now with this kind of uh, a looming... Uh, danger of, 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 of new transnational far right and, and, and Trump probably coming back or, or, or hopefully not, but you, don't, you never know. So there, there is a certain need for, for, for introspection within the European Union. And this process of introspection has, uh, I mean, Macron's speech uh, is always a kind of a dreaming of a big solidary European Union, but we haven't reached the moment where the EU can act uh, with one a clear uh, vision and clearly stand between what we call uh, nominally European values, which is a vision of a just, solidary, democratic, free, uh, equal uh, society, solidary society. Uh, and, and, and as long as this introspection is going on, and as long as we have certain institutions like the DG NIR or uh, Commissioner for Enlargement, etc., etc., ready uh, or standing here uh, to basically compromise these values on a daily level, I think uh, we don't have a reliable partner uh, uh, in, in the Western Balkans. And then, I mean, for, for that time, uh, we need to create uh, a vision of a society through fighting, through doing, uh, and through showing that basically change is possible. But yet, there will be, I mean, a certain moment will come where the EU, uh, I, I think, has, has to, to position itself uh, and that will be probably that, that moment. And, and in, at that moment, I think uh, the EU has to explicitly draw red lines, obviously, uh, protect the rule of law, uh, and to take side uh, of those that are really uh, embarking on these emancipatory democratic values. And this is right now certain movements, uh, uh, local initiatives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and and my, my hypothesis here is basically if the EU doesn't start doing it uh, in the Western Balkans, it's going to ruin the very core of the, of the self-understanding of the European Union uh, in, the, in, in the EU. I mean, this is one of the regions where you have all the tools at disposal. You just need, need, need to use them. But this is, I mean, right now, uh, I would not say that this is, this is still, uh, that, 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 that that's palpable. I mean, it needs to materialize in a way. You mentioned the recommendations uh, that you gave in your brief uh, to, the, to the EU. Uh, broadly, uh, what, is, what, would, what would it be? I mean, there are those general, general recommendations to stop the practice of stabilitocracy, draw red lines, uh, stop compromising values for the, for, for the sake of stability, etc., etc. But there are very concrete uh, policy recommendations in the policy brief. For example, I mean, we know that the grassroots movements and local initiatives are struggling to get resources. I mean, all of you have to invest time. Uh, you need uh, simple uh, issues like, I mean, uh, transportation for the, for the activists, etc., etc. Uh, supporting these grassroots initiatives, not only nationally, but also connecting them on the regional level and creating this kind of a ties and networks of solidarity that are very concretely supported also 
by the by by the money from the European Union uh, instead of pouring the money into old uh, kind of a civil society mechanisms that we have will be for example a very important step supporting initiatives like I mean we have established the engaged democracy initiative with the European Fund of the Balkans uh, this is this kind of a horizontal networking put the money into into that one uh, and and by accepting uh, the activists as allies and siding or taking side uh, or standing along with them uh, uh, out there, uh, that will be a huge message. I think that will be a huge message. Imagine just, I mean, uh, Ursula von der Leyen not coming to Belgrade and not visiting Vucic, but having a kind of a panel discussion with Kreni Pokreni or going to, to see the site of the Rio Tinto. I mean, imagine that kind of a sign. It will be great. Marina, Miran, uh, would you feel stronger on the ground if, if you would know that EU has your back? I don't know. I think that every kind of support is good because uh, if you do the things you do because you think it's right to do, if somebody supports you, it's pl plus more. <laughs> so I don't think, I think that the uh, ruling party is usually playing with that. If someone supports you, you do what they want. Yeah. That, that is totally not correct. If someone supports you, that means that someone sees the value in what you do. And of course, it's good that someone... All, all the people support each other, so I don't, th I don't see the issue in that. Miran? Okay, uh, so uh, I have a question, like a rhetorical question. What does every party want? What kind of ministry does it want? First of all, okay, police and the Ministry of Finance. So the money is the moving part of every country, and when it comes to the movement and people that are organizing, uh, somebody who gives you money, yeah, maybe they will not ask you a thing now, but when you become big or when you do something, they will ask uh, a favor later. So my, my personal opinion is uh, you want to be uh, self-sustainable as much as you can, but on the basis of uh, crowdfunding and people, when people uh, see you and believe you and when you do things, people will give you money. So being independent is uh, uh, an important thing and people should do that as much as they can. I mean, I personally do that. I don't take any money from any kind of fund. Uh, I, I work. So I work as a freelancer, and also I do this kind of thing. I mean, my job allows me to, to do these kind of things. It's a kind of a privilege, I would say. But uh, when it comes to EU or any kind of uh, foreign, uh, let's say, force, uh, I would say we don't want to rely on it. On it. If they want to support somebody, okay, good. But first of all, we need to trust ourselves. And then if the support comes, okay. So but, I just want mm -hmm. to add to that because uh, Kreni, for many, for example, we also have the vision of like being sustainable uh, by getting the small donations from citizens. But I just want to like uh, break the, this narrative. Like of, like of course you need to be sustainable and to depend on yourself. But the narrative, if somebody supports you, that means that you are doing something wrong. I think that that is something that we need to break. <laughs> and that's why I said what I said. But also, we have to be kind of honest and to, to think of the EU as a political body. And how should EU find a balance of not being accused of interfering into domestic affairs, but also giving support to people who, who need that? <laughs> It's a question for them. <laughs> so I, I have to say that, uh, you know, I, I'm very frustrated uh, uh, from, from the perspective that I work for, for the organization that were involved in different uh, processes related to, to, to the European integration uh, process of, of Serbia, that we produced uh, hundreds of reports in order to explain uh, what is going to happen in, uh, in, in, in Serbia and to identify gaps, to identify uh, early alarms. Uh, uh, everything everything uh, uh, was clear, you know, uh, uh, in the past and, and uh, uh, everyone uh, could predict uh, where uh, we will have, uh, where, where we will stand now. Uh, so in uh, in that regard, uh, also of course I, I participated in numerous meetings with with different EU uh, officials, both both here or or uh, or uh, in, in in other countries. Uh, but definitely, uh, EU has a political role, 
and uh, uh, EU uh, has to influence uh, uh, the government if uh, Serbia wants to go to, to, to the European Union. Uh, the, the things are very, how to say that, uh, uh, very simple. Uh, we have uh, some standards, uh, what, uh, what should be uh, uh, achieved, uh, and that was the role of European Union to follow and to monitor that process. But what happened, meanwhile, is that actually uh, they just check the boxes uh, within that process and that uh, they lose a substance. Uh, and now, uh, uh, in the last or two years... Power, that, that yeah, yeah, but in the last two years, if you... Uh, if you uh, just um, this law on referendum and, and, and people's initiative, we work on it for two years. And my organization actually suggested uh, within uh, public uh, administration reform process, which is supported directly by EU, uh, to adopt this law uh, in order to make some new rules for people's initiative, etc., etc. Also, things related to referendum should be done by the Constitutional Act. <laughs> but we lose two years, you know, in working groups. Uh, in numerous meetings with the government, with Ministry of uh, State of uh, Public Administration and local self-government. We had meetings with Venice Commission where we uh, uh, used the same arguments uh, before protests uh, about uh, the paying uh, uh, people's initiative, about other aspects of, of referendum, etc., etc. So we had chance. Uh, to change it in institutional level with direct support of the European Union. So you cannot imagine my uh, level of frustration related to that. And what, we, uh, 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 what happened then? Then the most important uh, things and issues were addressed after the, after the protests and according to the requests from the streets. So it's a kind of very mixed you know, messages also sent by European Union, uh, and I think that definitely for the future they have to, uh, 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 you know, uh, balance it uh, uh, somehow, and uh, just to, uh, if they want civil society to be involved in different process, especially to use existing institutional mechanism related to the European integration process, then uh, they have to be uh, prepared that uh, we don't want to be just, you know, a PR tools or to participate without any substance or, uh, or, or any other sense. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a peculiar case yeah. that the EU is uh, very slow in addressing uh, urgent issues, uh, but also EU is about cooperation, about uh, regional uh, cooperation in the, in the Western Balkans. And regarding civic, uh, civic uh, movements, uh, do you see, uh, all four of you, uh, uh, enough space uh, for, for uh, building a regional network of, of those organizations, especially regarding uh, green agenda, because we can't talk about uh, green agenda only in national uh, borders and, and lines. So is there enough space for regional uh, initiatives uh, to, to build a network? Whether you can start. I mean, look, that's, that's something quite, quite, quite natural. I mean, uh, uh, in the process of the Yugoslav dissolution, we, we partly have become strangers to each other. So, I mean, uh, when you just, I mean, ask the common people on the streets of Belgrade or on the streets of Banja Luka or Zagreb what's going on in, uh, in uh, Podgorica. Uh, or uh, can you tell me about uh, the problems of, of, of local communities in Tetovo? Or, mm. or, uh, people usually uh, don't have a clue. Uh, and uh, precisely the uh, ecological agenda uh, and the climate change agenda, uh, that's a global one, that's quite obvious. Uh, and if you have the air pollution, you have it uh, uh, in Belgrade and in Sarajevo and in Tetovo and in Skopje, that's quite, quite obvious that you need to to, to work on that one. Uh, and I think we have to, to despite all the, 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 the nationalizing discourses and, and, and self-consumed uh, national states, we have to come back to this kind of a regional, but also pan-European uh, togetherness. I mean, we speak partly the same language, we listen to the same music, be it Seitz or, 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 or Dubioza Collective, 
We watch the same movies, and and I think there is. We have the same still, issues as we saw in the yes, regional. Yes, we have the we have the same issues, and the, the the same issues are going to increase. I mean, the 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 climate change is not going to disappear, and the ecological destruction of of our region is going probably to continue. That's one. Uh, the the injustice or the rise of far right, for example, if you just take that as an example, that's a European issue, uh, and I think there is a huge potential. Uh, for example, in this AD network, we organized this convention at the beginning of September with 100 activists from all over the region. And you simply see the, 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 the potential, the joyful potential for change and for working together. Uh, and I think there, there is a need for more initiatives of that one. I, need, uh, I, I think we all need to, I mean, we need to fight the local fights, obviously. You cannot fight the Kreni Pokreni you know, in, 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 in Vitez or in Sarajevo. Uh, but we have to look for the structural commonalities uh, learn from each other, share the knowledge that we have in mobilizing, and then addressing basically the same grievances and fighting the same struggles. I think that that's the future of, of, of this common post Yugoslav region, if you wish. Marina Miran, yes, how does it seem from the I, perspective of, of activists? I totally agree uh, of what Vedran just said. That is basically happening uh, mm. because, for example, several weeks ago, a uh, person from Oz, uh, Bosnia called me to ask how we can help them to organize ar around Rio Tinto in Bosnia. So that is happening and there is a need. Uh, the thing is how to help people to uh, be organized uh, in the process. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I think there is a tendency to do that. I'm also part of the uh, Leading Change Network that is working globally. Uh, and I'm also personally trying to organize people in Europe in that sense, like how to help people to organize small local groups because local is not enough. If you bring local to national level, then you need to go to, the, to talk with neighbors and then continent and then globe. Uh, so I think that's the way we should go. Okay, so uh, my personal opinion is that uh, we have more issues and things in common on Western Balkans than uh, when it comes to European Union. Mm -hmm. I would say when it comes to European Union, I would uh, say in a way European uh, Union is dead, uh, because especially when it comes to the idea of liberal democracy that uh, was the main idea with the whole values that were in the European Union and especially with the Ukraine and things that are happening now. I mean, uh, European Union will die in a way if they don't change. So uh, it, without a uh, big change, European Union will not uh, be, be there. That's my opinion. But when it comes to Western Balkans, that's something that we can rely on. I would think that uh, the initiatives that we have, so we had protests, uh, ecological protests that were not just uh, the roadblocks and things that happened like, a couple of months ago. People came from different countries, like from Bosnia, Croatia, Macedonia, they came to Belgrade uh, as a kind of a support. Uh, and uh, I believe, and I, uh, not just I believe, I'm absolutely certain that there are things that are happening now, like for example, Bor Maidampik, that are not so visible, but that, uh, that uh, are going to be visible in the near future. Homole, that's, that's uh, Serbia, but we will try also to organize and help people to go, not just like a couple of activists going to, uh, to uh, Bosnia or, or Croatia, but uh, as much pe people as we can to bring people and support and show the solidarity, not just by slogans, but with numbers in, uh, mm. for example, in Bosnia. Bosnia has uh, these kind of problems with mini, uh, mini power plants, uh, hydro power plants, and uh, things like that, and uh, your Tinto. So uh, those things are not going to go away. Mm -hmm. And I think people that are uh, doing uh, these kind of protests, not just roadblocks, but organizing will continue to do so. And this is a struggle that we will that will continue. When we also saw uh, Moramo and Mojamo, we, we mentioned it uh, as a kind of a regional mm -hmm. uh, project in that, in that sense. Uh, what kind of a, a big uh, regional green, uh, maybe not party, but network of, of party uh, would be a way forward? For this region, yeah. As far as I know, there are some efforts in 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 in, in that way, but uh, definitely uh, it's a process. I think that there is a, a, a such tendency, and it's it's naturally. 
uh, uh, of course, we will see what will be uh, what will be the result because uh, parallelly all those movements uh, are establishing and, and strengthening in 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 their open countries and uh, based on uh, how they uh, actually uh, would uh, act and uh, be successful in their own countries, I think it will um, it will be also related to to, to the regional uh, uh, regional result. Definitely, green agenda in that way uh, is a very good uh, uh, very good topic because it actually uh, unites people because we all share the same problems uh, and uh, no uh, you know no 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 borders uh, in in terms of you know air pollution uh, for example I'm uh, uh, I was born in northern uh, western part of, of Serbia very close to also uh, uh, Ugljevik in, in in Bosnia and that air pollution uh, uh, also uh, come to, to, to our country or, or any other uh, example. Uh, also uh, activists, uh, I think, uh, started to, uh, to act uh, uh, together uh, rather faster than uh, when, when we are talking about some concrete political movement, uh, especially connections uh, between people gathered uh, around small hydro plants. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, during the first uh, environmental uprising, uh, uh, some uh, girl from Bosnia uh, was one of, of, of the speaker and came to 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 to, to say support uh, for for the people in Serbia. That was really very uh, very emotionally. Uh, but also, um, if you remember uh, the Serbian uh, Me Too movement uh, uh, initiated uh, by the beginning of last year, when uh, several uh, Serbian. Uh, 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 girls uh, from the public sphere start with their own witnesses uh, uh, about uh, sexual violation. I think that was uh, a very massive response, especially in Croatia, although Croatia is a uh, EU, EU member state, uh, Bosnia, Macedonia, uh, and definitely uh, it, uh, uh, it, it shows us that there are no borders for concrete uh, uh, problems of, of, of the citizens. And there is enough strength to, uh, yeah. to achieve something. Uh, thank you. Uh, and before ending remarks, I would just like to, to ask briefly if there are any questions uh, from the audience. Okay, if there are no questions, I would just... Uh, like to, to, to end with the uh, uh, same question for uh, all of you. Uh, so Vedran states in his paper that the Western Balkans needs a new democratization strategy and narrative. Uh, so uh, very briefly, what would be your suggestion? We can start from Boena maybe mm -hmm. and then finish with Vedran. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, definitely, uh, because uh, uh, you know, uh, people uh, lose the trust in, in democracy. Uh, currently, we don't have any better option than democracy. Uh, although, you know, uh, there are a lot of tendency, uh, tendencies in, in, uh, in Western Balkans, uh, you know, in, in order to show all weaknesses of democracy and uh, raising populism and uh, uh, populistic narratives and uh, also this uh, war-related uh, uh, narrative, uh, which is common for, I think, uh, uh, all countries uh, uh, in, in this momentum, but definitely uh, uh, democracy is the best option. So to uh, remind ourselves uh, Yes, of, definitely, of definitely. Uh, although I, I think also the, the problem is related to the, to the global trends, uh, but definitely we have to, uh, to find uh, just new, new, new waves to recognize again the substance of mm -hmm. democracy. I think that we lose it uh, with all these, uh, you know, uh, activist activities for, for for the decades, and we just for, for 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 forgot what is the substance of democracy. Thank you, Miran. What would be the the, the way forward? The way forward. Okay, so uh, like I, I could po point out a couple of things. Not not a leader. Just briefly, please. Yeah, yeah. not a leader. Leaders. Uh, so uh, not not the way how the polit political are run now when it comes to media and stuff like that. So uh, thinking more in a like a long longevity kind of way, uh, organizing and uh, being on, on on the same issue, not just moving from time uh, from theme to theme and uh, like uh, going uh, with with this kind of a populist thing, like acting on 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 daily level. 
we should act uh, more like with concrete politics, uh, sticking with ideas and doing the things on the ground. Thank you. Marina? On the same spot, uh, I think people are power and we should remind ourselves every day that uh, everything depends of, on our choices every day. <laughs> Thank you. Vedran? I think what Marina said is, is quite fundamental during the discussion. Everything will not be the same and that means basically we have to, I think the, the fundamental first step is to reclaim the notion of democracy that has been stolen in the last two decades by mm. political mm. parties, corrupt political elites and fill it with, with emotions. Uh, and that's fundamental. I mean, democracy is really about optimism and joy. Autocracies are about fear, we know. We need to come back to this kind of a joyful coming together and, and reclaiming democracy by doing so. So Understood. trust, solidarity, leaders, concrete, Enjoy. politics, and Enjoy. <laughs> joy. Thank you very much for this fruitful uh, discussion. And I would like to, to invite you all for the networking cocktail uh, afterwards. And of course, we will have opportunity to discuss further uh, with the participants. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>